Who knew a lens could change the way your image looks this much? This is the Shure Nightwalker 16mm T1.2 cinema lens and in this video I'm going to be showing you plenty of sample footage with this lens. I'm also going to be sharing with you the things that I do like, the things that I don't like which you need to be aware of, and why this lens has not only impressed me but also my Lumix loving friend Sam Holland, even to the point where it left him speechless, I never thought that day would come, for near two hours. Because all of this footage came from a Sony camera which he doesn't normally like the image of. And after looking at the footage with the Sure lens, it changed his mind. Is the secret to having a great image on any camera just simply down to having Sure lenses? So the Nightwalker 16mm is a cinema lens that fits any camera which is APS-C Super 35. For example, the Sony FX30, which is what I've been using. The field of view that you get from this 16mm lens is the same as a 24mm lens in full frame. And this lens and the rest of the Nightwalker lenses are also available in MFT, RF, X and L mount lenses, so if you don't shoot Sony like I do, it's not the end of the world, there's an alternative. Now my first impressions of getting this lens out of the box genuinely was that the build quality is exceptional. The outside of the lens is made from metal and it's also got a metal rear mount. Iris control at the back of the lens and then the focus ring towards the front. However, one of the things I did notice is that it's got no weather sealing gaskets at the back of the lens. Now for all those people who like to be aesthetically pleasing with their camera gear, this lens is available in two different colors. You can either have it in the black like I've got it or you can have it in the metal gray. And overall, this is possibly one of the best well-made quality lenses that I've held for the price that you can get it at. Sure by no means held back when designing this lens. Like many other cinema lenses, the iris and the focus markings are visible from both sides of the lens. Both the focus and iris ring have teeth going all the way around so you can easily attach any of your focus pulling or other iris controls to the lens. And you will be pulling focus with this lens because it is just a manual lens. No autofocus system in a camera is going to save you with this lens. Now I'll be honest, when I got this lens, I was a little bit nervous in using it because of this reason. I'm not that much of a manual focus kind of guy, quite frankly, I only ever really use autofocus because when I've used manual focus in the past, I've sucked big time. But the focus ring on this lens has around 270 degrees of travel from the minimum to maximum focus points, meaning that you can easily fine tune that focus to make sure it's nailed or as close as every time. And if you do have to do any tweaking with your focus, you may be concerned about getting the pulsating edges that you get from lenses like this. That effect is down to something called focus breathing, which is fairly common in most lenses. And if you have to constantly keep tweaking your focus, sometimes that can be really distracting to the viewer when you start watching the video back. But that will never be a problem when it comes to the 16mm Nightwalker because this doesn't have any focus breathing. So any focus breathing compensation that you may have turned on in your camera, you can go and turn it off straight away. Chromatic aberration with this lens wasn't a major problem but we did get a little bit of colour fringing around certain parts of the image, especially when shooting at the wider T-stops. By the time you got to T2, it was fairly minimal, and by the time we got to T4, it was pretty much gone. But shooting at T2 or T4 isn't a major problem because your lens is gonna be slightly sharper, which we'll get to in just a moment, but also more of your image is gonna be in focus rather than when you're shooting at T1.2, meaning that manual focusing will be a little bit easier for you. And I need all the help I can get, so no problems there. Alongside other cinema lenses, this lens doesn't have any image stabilization built in. So any kind of image stabilization is gonna to have to come from your camera or a gimbal if you choose to use one. Now, when it comes to things that I don't like about this lens, fortunately, the list is fairly short. But this is something I do need to mention, and if you've ever used any of the other Nightwalker lenses, what I'm about to tell you probably won't shock you. The lens wide open at T1.2 isn't exactly tack sharp. Looking at some of the stills from the camera, around the edges and the corners, your image does seem to go fairly soft. However, like most lenses, as you start to stop down on the T-stop, your sharpness does come back. But other than that, there isn't really anything bad per se to say about this lens. And the sharpness, or lack of, that I've just mentioned may not actually be a bad thing. I'm not gonna deny that it's disappointing, but at the same time, cinema lenses aren't exactly known for being the sharpest out there, but it's all about the color reproduction that you get from the lens into the camera. And that right there is where this lens shines. Looking at all the footage that I've shot with this lens, everything looks real. 
And that probably sounds really stupid because obviously everything looks real, but just stick with me for a second. For the last few months, I've had a Lumix camera on loan to me, and I've also used Lumix cameras in the past, and there's something about that image that just really looks great. And I've thought it for a long time, especially when we're watching Sam Holland's videos and when he's been using the Suri lenses, mainly the Venus lenses, which are a lot more expensive. There's just something about it. I don't know how to put my finger on it, but they just look really good. And for a long time, I've always put it down to the Lumix looking better than a Sony. But you know what? From looking at all the footage from the 16 millimeter, I'm gonna take that back. The skin tones look great. The blacks look great. Everything looks a little bit deeper. And the colors overall are just there. They feel better. I don't know. But let's speak to the man himself that constantly reminds me every single day of my life that Lumix is better than Sony. It does look nice. It looks clean. Like I've used a bunch of different Sony cameras on numerous different occasions. I've done loads of side-by-side -side comparisons with cameras such as Canon, Lumix, Blackmagic, all sorts. I've never liked a Sony image in terms of color and a little, a little bit of the image. Looking at this image using the Shure lenses, the colors are stunning. This looks as good as a Lumix camera in my opinion. And that's a big statement for this boy to make. Yeah. Maybe it's the Sony lenses that make Maybe. Sony's not have good color, in my opinion. When I say not have a good color, I mean not have the color that I prefer. So maybe it's like, if you get a Sony then, is it worth just getting these lenses? Overall, this lens, especially for the price you'll pay for it, is beautiful. The image it gives is stunning, and the best bit is they don't just do a 16 millimeter, they do a whole range of Nightwalker lenses. There's a 24 millimeter, a 35, a 55, and now a 75 millimeter. And again, all of them are at T1.2. So if you wanna see some footage from the rest of that range, let me know in the comments. I'll try and make that happen over the coming weeks. Now, it isn't just the lens that is gonna make your footage look on point. Some of that is gonna come down to the settings that you dial in for your picture profile. So if you're ordering this lens and have any Sony camera whatsoever, watch this video right here because that is where all the magic happens. See you soon.